Hey guys, uh, due to a constraint in time, I'm just gonna skip everything and I'm just gonna show you the circuit. So welcome to the third video. Today I'm gonna be doing a differentiator and an integrating op-amp. So this is how our circuit is supposed to look like for a differentiating op-amp. I'm just gonna go through all the uh, parts that I've placed here uh, since it, it's time consuming to place each and every part manually. So here we have uh, the V pulse. So the V-pulse values that you're going to be setting for V1 and V2 are basically peak values in the negative and positive half cycle. Um, and I don't know what TD, TR, TF and all are, but uh, for TD you set it as 0, TR is 0.1N and TF is 0.1N. PW is expected to be 0.5M and PER is 1M. And uh, followed by that you connect a resistance in series of 1.5K and uh, another capacitor of 0.1U. Uh, in series along with that um, from that you take a feedback uh, and that feedback you connect a resistance and a capacitance in uh, parallel to each other the capacitance value is a uh, 0.01 u and the resistance is 15k and you connect it to the output terminal terminal number six and uh, from third terminal you take another drag it out and connect it to the ground and um, terminals 7 and 4 are connected to 15 and minus 15 respectively and grounded and um, then place the voltage probes in the input and the output end and uh, for the simulation profile uh, go for time domain uh, time domain and uh, run to time is 5 milliseconds uh, it's just to get a better graph and better view of how uh, what we can expect from a differentiated circuit. So let's run it. When we run this, we get a shape something like something like this. Oops. Okay, we get something like this. I don't really know what what kind of graph is this. It looks like a triangle, which well, it's not exactly a triangle. Uh, so basically it's a differentiation of the square waveform you get something like this all you have to do is just um, sorry okay. all you have to do is just plot these points and uh, you know just plot them and uh, since manual calculations cannot be done well it can be done but it's time consuming and all that stuff you just have to plot these points um, the peak values and <clears throat> the values for the capacitor and all that stuff it's basically uh, been derived uh, by using the frequency and everything uh, not going to be covering that just use these preset values to get a graph like that moving on uh, to an integrated circuit um, okay so So moving on, we're going to be having the same V-pulse, uh, use the same source, try not to change the circuit. It's pretty much a similar thing, uh, except you won't have a capacitance in series after the resistance over here. And um, the value, some of the values have changed, like for example, this is 10K and uh, RF is 100K and parallel is connected to a 10N capacitor. And this has been given to the feedback and um, from there you connect it to the output and uh, from terminal 7 and 4 connect it to 15 volt and minus 15 volt respectively and uh, connect the voltage probes in the input and output terminal it's just it's, everything is almost same as a differentiator uh, and yeah and you're going to be using the same simulation profile so don't change it time domain 5 milliseconds And um, when we run this, we get a graph that looks like this. Okay, so if you notice this graph, it looks like a triangle waveform, but um, it's a regressing triangle waveform. Triangular. Um, well, basically, it's an integration of the square waveform that we're inputting. Uh, it can be calculated, but uh, it's just a waste of time calculate it manually and all that stuff so we that's why we're using p-spice to get a 
an ideal representation of how what we can expect when we use an integrator op-amp integrating op-amp and um, well you just have to mark the uh, peak points just take a screenshot of it it's pretty much it in integrating and differentiating op-amp uh, thank you so much please don't forget to like share and subscribe